Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tommy, and welcome to my third official tutorial on this channel. I am so glad for all your guys' support. The channel is doing good. Thank you to everyone who subscribed. If you haven't subscribed yet, you have a chance, but I'm not forcing you to, only if you like the video. <laughs> I want to be fair. In this build, I will show you how to do the enclosure that I did for my Jurassic Water World build i should be showing you the enclosure now on my screen it's basically an enclosure that has a lagoon like this in the middle of it and it's all inside of a circle and we'll be putting parasaurolophus in there so what you need to do first is to get a path and press shift and curve the path do a circle that's very easy right and out of this circle as you can see you can do another path it should be the right angle and if you do two of them and then you join it like this the game already knows how the circle should continue and you do a circle like this let's check the lagoon the lagoon is still a little too big and i don't think we could fit an enclosure around it so what we need to do is do another circle that's all it takes basically it's just running around in circles when we join it here and then the path already knows how to continue it kind of jumps into the pattern and just like that do we want to make it bigger we do for the purposes of this video let's be let's be extra let's let's do lex lex and tim hello uh let's do a very big enclosure like this this used to be hell a lot of work in the old game in the jurassic world evolution one when you basically had to put out all of these paths then join them together now the game game knows finally the game knows okay what you want to do now is delete the inner circle and uh, fit the lagoon in there so that it's exactly in the middle okay it's exactly in the middle what you want to do now is to delete the path around the lagoon what you want to do right off the bat is put in a viewing gallery a lagoon viewing gallery it's not gonna it's not gonna be linear with the path so whatever what we want to do now is put in the path over here we start like this and we we want to make it bigger than just a regular path we join the path and we can do some nice path work a little nice path work never hurt nobody okay pretty good i would say uh what you want to do now is delete this path voila and if you want to have this path a little bigger i'd suggest doing uh, the shortest length like this Again, you join these two, and then the path knows where to go. Okay, now I kind of realize that the enclosure will be big, <laughs> very big. So maybe we'll put something with the para in there, because this is going to be so, so big. So, so big. Okay, so we have our basic path work done. Tedious stuff. Really not my favorite thing to do, but I somehow kind of always do it because i don't know i'm a megalomaniac it has to look good this looks weird but let's put a tree in it if it if it looks weird let's put a tree in it okay first let's do the fence let's have it out of the way so with the fences what you want to do you want to get it as close to the lagoon as possible and around the path work like this so that we have our path to the lagoon and now we try to get so close to the lagoon as humanly possible maybe do this just to be on the safe side so that the guests actually feel like it's safe what we're doing here now let's do fences around the whole enclosure that i will speed up again for you Okay, now that we have our fences out of the way, finally, 
we can actually start building the enclosure. That's why we were here. So let's lower the ground around the, the lagoon. We can use the big brush, right? More like this. For those of you who have already seen my videos, I hate it when the fences are crooked when they're not in line. So I always make sure that the slope is very precisely next to the fence. Okay. So now what you want to do is uh, take the smaller brush and put it as close to here as possible. Don't worry, you'll get you'll get it back later from this side as well. It really looks terrible now, but uh, when you go back, you can actually do some repairs. It's gonna look very good. It's gonna look so nice. Like this. You want to make sure that the fences are not crooked. That's my number one rule for nice enclosures. No crooked fences. Sometimes I do crooked fences, but that's on very rare occasion when there's no other choice. It's tedious work, but if you want to do complicated work like this, you really need to have patience for it. And I, I, I don't have patience for it. I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> I don't know how it's possible that I can do these things in this game because I don't consider myself to be a patient person but here we are <laughs> somehow I managed okay and now you want to make sure that you, know, you have this rock texture around all of these places basically what you can actually do is to put in rock texture everywhere because we, we want we want it to feel rocky and that's what I did in my uh, build for uh, the Jurassic World world because you're gonna put water down there. And water requires rocky textures and sand. That's another thing. If you have water in your enclosure, make sure that the water is on rocks or sand. We don't have to fill this whole thing with water because yeah, I, I, I made it huge. I made it so freaking huge and I didn't even have to, but it looks, it's, it's gonna look nice. And we can actually put in some more uh, vegetation like this. We can do little islands like this. That's something that I like to do, but you always want to make sure that the islands look believable, that they look pretty, that they are not just like bloop. You want to shape it somehow in some form. Do a circle like this and then go back around with the water brush to create that. Okay, and now we just fill it with vegetation. It's really no big deal. This is a very tropical looking enclosure. So you want to put in tropical plants. You want to fill your little islands with uh, the greenery. Always spread it around. Do it in patches, do it uh, disproportionately so that it looks natural. Spread it around, spread it around. Uh, we can put in some uh, forests uh, over here because this uh, looks like a larger part of the enclosure. Whoopie doo. We can put in some forest over here as well, actually. Nice. Okay, uh, you want to make sure. Uh, that your dinosaurs can't actually escape. So just to be on the safe side, put small rocks next to the fence over here so that they can't escape. And do the same thing on the other side just to be safe. And sometimes this game, you have a l the tiniest little dent and uh, you get a notification about danger to guests. So. Okay, and the most inter and inter wrap that uh, uh, what are words? The most integral part of this enclosure are the rocks, of course. The rocks are the most integral part of every single enclosure. What is Jurassic World without rocks? And if I have open water somewhere like this, I like to do these little patches of rocks in the middle so that it looks like a small island. There's never too many rocks in a build. You can never go wrong with too many rocks. What you can actually do is get really close to the to the lagoon. 
with the rocks and make it look like they are sticking out of there. And you want to put a rock or two over here like this. You also want to have the small rocks to make it more natural. To make it look like they belong there. Well, they do belong there. So. Okay, a little over the water. And what we actually forgot to do is put in some of these because these look tropical as well and they make the environment look better. It's not just the palms, it's also these kind of whatever they are. It's a nice little touch. All right, it's looking quite presentable. And what I forgot, I'm sorry guys, today I'm a little, I don't know why I'm, I keep forgetting things, but it's uh, to mix in a little bit of the sand texture. You cannot just have the rock texture. You, you wanna go for a rocky, sandy, something in the middle something in between somehow mix it so that it gives the enclosure a different kind of layer and especially around the water's edges you want to have it mixed you can put in some sand in the water and it looks like it's a little more shallow okay i think this looks pretty good what do you think guys well tell me in the comments because i can't hear you right now all right, so let's put in the dinosaurs and let's open the park. Okay, we are officially back with the dinosaurs. They look very happy. They look very nice. I love Parasaurol because it's, it's one of my favorite creatures. And we have the Brachy here because I thought that only Paras in such a big enclosure would be a waste of a good enclosure. So we also have four Brachys in here. And what I haven't told you is that we have the Ictis over here. Oh, I love this olive skin one. This is, this is a good one. And here's the Ictis. Here's how we can see the Ictis. They're so cute. Ooh, what a nice cute little creature. And basically that's it. This is how it looks like. It's a little bigger than I wanted it to be, but you can do any size, basically. You can put uh, viewing towers over here somewhere to overview the whole... Hole? <laughs> the whole hole? I really do hope you enjoyed today's video and you got some inspiration for your own builds. My name is Tommy. If you liked the video, please give me a like, a comment, share. Maybe you can also subscribe. I'm not saying that you have to but i would be really glad and i would really appreciate it because i will be doing more of this stuff and uh, if you like my videos why not right <laughs> until the next time have a great day and i'm really happy that you have been here with me bye bye